All right, welcome back to your view round table with the Uncle JJ Tavan. We're coming to you live from Linden, and tonight I'm joined by Advocate Muzisi Kakan. I haven't seen you in a while, Advocate. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Good you for day. coming out here in the dead of night. Eh? But usually I'm still working this time, <laughs> given the nature of my clients. You are an owl like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You spoke very well at the at the, at the, at the memorial and the funeral of, of um, Lani. Oh, thank you, man. Thank yeah, you. It's it, a was, it was time. really a, a, a befitting, a befitting send off there. Thank you, thank you. Well, you know, I had an excellent guest last week, Christine Kunda. You know her very well. I saw it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Great that you saw it. And she, she really gave a sense that there's still a lot of work to be done to transform the legal system in our country. And I, I wanted to explore some more conversation to say, you know, the the the, the, the historical context of the legal system. It always triggers this sense of this system having been used to oppress us. Yep. In other words, you know, the people passed illegal laws and then the lawyers just implemented them. The judges sent people to prison using those same laws and so on. And so there is a bigger, if you like, challenge to change it. You know, and I think I want to start off by conversation to say, what with your own experience in the field and so on, do you think that, uh, you know, are we halfway there? Uh, mm. given how this system used to be, or is there still so much to be changed in this legal system in order for it almost to align with a new constitutional order? Thank you, Jesse. It's, it's a difficult one because you, you're dealing with... Well, let me put it this way. We're doing as badly as the country is doing. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Be because you can't really separate this aspect from the... The, the spectrum of what yeah. needs to be done in the country since our political yeah. settlement. And so the legal profession, there, there are many aspects to be changed. Um, but what, one thing you've said which is correct about the law is that yeah. it doesn't matter what you do in society, you change, you create a better society, yeah. but it always gets taken or captured, to use the phrase that we like these days. Yeah. It gets captured by, by, by the powerful. Um, in terms of its values and who it serves. And so in a way, we're still far from a legal system that makes justice accessible uh, to ordinary South Africans. We're still far from the stage when we could have a document like the Constitution that is praised so much, founded on the lived realities of South Africans. Um, and so, in a way, there is so much to transform um, in that. I hate the term because it simply sometimes means tinkering with what's old and not changing it. Um, I prefer that in many respects, you radically change things. Yeah, instead of reforming them Absolutely. And, and tinkering in the, on the side. I think when you tinker with things, you... <laughs> You must accept that historically you're dealing with the law and other aspects of our economy and yeah. other things. You're dealing with things that were created for colonial and racist purposes. Yes. And so if you tinker with them, you actually don't change them. You, you, you reform them to suit yeah. new, new elites, new people mm. to use the law yeah. the way they want. And, and, and once people are in power, they actually reproduce themselves and create laws that sustain them. And, and so if you talk about radically changing the law, yeah. you have to change it in such a way that it, because it's about people, and one of the ways of knowing whether you're changing things is to test what do you do with those on the margins of the human condition. Yes. And if your law can deal with what happens to those on the margins of the human condition, yeah. then you're halfway there. Including access, which in, if, if we talk practically, this is what we're talking about. A lot of people don't feel that they, have, they can access the law. I probably can't afford your services. I can't afford myself <laughs> if I needed a lawyer. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? So people still feel whatever the, 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 the nice things that the Constitution says and, and what have you, if tomorrow I got a, a dispute with somebody, you know, I have to think twice about taking them on legally, because that may mean that if I lose, I'm going to even the court to even say, yeah, plus cost, you lose and you must pay. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm glad you talk about justice, because I've listened mm. to discussions you've had with people yeah. about law. You know, human beings 
And we know exception, it's not just this country, everywhere. We have a view that justice is the exclusive preserve of people we like. Mm. That's one of the weaknesses of human nature. Yes. Uh, and so as soon as you see me represent someone you don't like, yeah. you, you get upset. And, and Surprised. Why is he representing Zuma? Yeah, why is, why is Muzi <laughs> representing Zuma? When yeah. I represented Julius it was okay. Zuma, it was okay. Yeah. And, but it's, it's how we see law. And, yeah. and, and for as long as we don't realize that justice is something that we must actually make accessible to everybody that needs the law. And, and if you want to check whether a country is a compassionate modern society, yeah. you want to see how it deals with the downtrodden yeah. and how it deals with the outcasts. The day they fire you here as an outcast for whatever yeah. reason, I must not judge you as your lawyer. And that's access to justice, yeah. my ability to represent. You are, you are making the offer. Are you, are you suspecting that uh, this, that may happen and I may need you? you look, I deal with <laughs> deposed presidents. So I'm not sure you yeah, this, that, I'm nothing in <laughs> comparison. <laughs> but I'll take you anyway. <laughs> but I think one, one of the things, JJ, about yeah. justice is that we, we need to make it accessible to ordinary people. Absolutely. And it's not Absolutely. just about money. It's about... Yeah. Does the law, does the constitution speak to the realities, the lived realities yeah. of your ordinary person? Yeah. And for me, that aspect of change requires an honest assessment of those colonial, apartheid, racist aspects yeah. of our law. And, and institutions. When I talk to the Minister of Justice, or even the Chief Justice, who have both been, been our guests here, right, there's a sense in which they're saying, there's a framework which can develop access or, or rather give, give, make access a reality. For example, the constitutional court. Apparently, I can approach the constitutional court because they don't have to sit and listen to anything. I can write my argument and then they can pronounce on the matter. But surely it's not as simple as that because you are probably going to write something so incoherent that they are going to throw it out with one line to say, this is dismissed, just go away. Yeah, I think there are many aspects of dealing with how you deal with disputes. And so access is not just access to the courts. And I think we must develop a way that settles mm. disputes for ordinary people before they need me, mm. you know, before they can, and we must find, I know lawyers may not like this, but yeah. we're dealing with people here. And I think we must transform our society in such a way that you create different levels of dealing with disputes between society, yeah. between the powerful and the powerless. Mm. Uh, because as it stands now, I always say the tragedy of my job is that people I grew up with, my parents, my sisters, yeah. and cannot afford me. Sure. Right? And so you need to turn that on its head a bit. And it does not mean you'll do away with lawyers. Yeah. You just transform the way in which an ordinary person who's in trouble can get yeah. a lawyer. Are you giving the legal aid of our uh, system of our country a thumbs down because you know <laughs> the, 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 the recent case of uh, I think it's Dudu Muyeni going to court and she says oh, I don't have money. She says, no, no, go to legal aid. Yeah. And and that that may have sounded flippant to say, can she can she get the same quality of representation that she can get coming to you if she were just to go to legal aid? Will they have two counsel there who can contest somebody like you? Yeah. Will they have lawyers who can prepare the papers, etc.? without costing her anything. Yeah, let, let's be honest. There is, there is going, there's always going to be a difficulty if you go to, to legal aid and others. I'm not, I'm not saying, not giving them a thumbs down. Yeah. By its very nature, free services tend to attract um, those practitioners that are not too busy. And sometimes, sure. because they're not too busy, may not be too experienced. But you need to create and build that experience. Mm. And maybe what we need to do at some point is to create a system. And I'm glad you had a discussion with uh, Sis Christine. Yeah. Because she was making very good points about yeah. how far we should go with this. Mm -hmm. We've started a new bar, for instance, the Pan-African Bar Association of South Africa, where yeah. we think, let's look at how we deal with pro bono, for instance. Yeah. How, do, how do we make sure that pro bono is not just hours I put in? Mm. As a, in order to renew my license, this is just my suggestion, to practice mm. as, a, as, a, as a senior counsel, I must be able to demonstrate that in the five years you have done some pro doing, bono work. I have done some work as a senior counsel to, to assist people who need justice. Who are less privileged. Who are less privileged. Who you are not just doing it because you're going to bail. Absolutely. Otherwise, and that's not happening at the moment. 
you know, it's not happening at, you know, if you wanted free work, and, I, and I, I'm saying this with great respect to our colleagues who are yeah. senior, all of us, is that we tend to do pro bono work that is sexy, if you know what that I mean. to be high profile. It's, it's NGOs, it the yeah. so-called NGOs, I call them lobby groups. Yeah. All of these big lobby groups funded by, by big international, international companies. companies. And yeah. so it looks like pro bono, but actually, actually it's, not. it's not. And so I think... One of the things I would like people like Sis Christine and others in, in the LPC to do, yeah. I think for, for me to keep my status as a senior counsel, which, by the way, was granted to me by the state, yeah. in order to, to honor that status that I'm given as a privilege, I think I must be able to demonstrate at some point that I've used this for the benefit of those... Of broader society. Of broader society. And in a way, I must know that in five years' time, if I cannot demonstrate that I've done work at the highest level where I practice in the Con Court and in the Supreme Court of Appeal for ordinary people who need those services, my license to practice may be taken away. And I think yeah. if you use that, you may well force us who are skilled or those who are senior enough to do that work, that type of that, work. That sounds like an excellent suggestion. I'm not sure whether it's in fact will see the light of day. <laughs> That's after the break, I want to talk to you about the transformation in the sector itself, the LPC being there. And what uh, puzzled me was the fact that the old structures that the LPC was supposed to replace still want to exist, but for a different reason and so on. And I'm not sure how you interpret that kind of thing, whether it may not be seen as a, a, almost a resistance to the new order, et cetera, and you almost have a, a, a lobby group within a new system, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, which can have a potential of undermining that system. But let's talk about that after the break. I'm talking on the roundtable tonight uh, with advocate Muzisi Kakan. Stay tuned. <laughs>